Welcome to r slash Entitled Parents, where an entitled woman gets herself a two-year prison sentence. Our next Reddit post is from Deleted. I started tutoring some kids at the beginning of quarantine for some extra money. This one woman thought that she would pay me an experience LMAO. She didn't pay me for a month. When I asked her why, she said, I thought you wanted to do it for yourself so that you can gain some experience with kids. I made it clear that I wasn't teaching for free, and she called me a selfish brat. I've stopped teaching now because it was overwhelming, but she still sends her kids to play with me. She says that they really love me and they want to spend time with me. I don't want to be a butthole by shooing the kids away every day, so I let them come over once a week. I teach them painting and crafts. I set boundaries and try to explain that I can't give them more time, but she still sends them every day. I asked her not to do it, and she tries to guilt trip me for not loving her kids back. Not to be mean, but her kids are wild. They have to touch everything and are super loud. I'm seriously considering moving at this point. I'm so done. OP, this lady is playing you plain and simple. She doesn't care about you teaching her kids, and she doesn't care about how much her kids love you. She's just using you for free babysitting. Shut her down, lock your door, and move on with your life. Our next Reddit post is from Lex8986. About 20 years ago when I was 14 years old, I'd been babysitting around my small town for two years. I had a great reputation with my regulars and would routinely stay until the early hours of the morning when the parents needed a night out. I would normally charge 15 bucks an hour, but that would jump up to $20 after midnight. There was a wedding happening in town, which meant that people would be traveling to attend and I was recommended to babysit by a trusted family friend. I'd never met these parents before. A bit of backstory, at the time, there was a big outbreak of meningococcal. There had been cases of it from where the parents were going to attend the wedding, and as a kid who was interested in stuff like this, I had read up all about it and knew the symptoms. The night of the wedding comes and I arrive at the hotel to meet the parents. The baby is one years old, and I thought it would be an easy night because I normally have three or four kids to look after. It was a really hot summer night and the baby was just in a nappy. The mother mentioned that he was teething and might be a little whiny, but nothing I couldn't handle. About an hour after they left, around 2pm, the baby woke up and was screaming. He was hot. I mean so hot to the touch that I pulled my hand back when I went to pick him up. I tried to calm him and cool him, but to no avail. It was a really hot summer night and the baby was just in a diaper. At 4pm when I knew the ceremony was over, I called the mother to tell her about her very sick child. This wasn't just teething. His temperature was soaring and she didn't even leave any ibuprofen or anything to help with that. She sighed into the phone and told me she'd be there in 20 minutes. Where the reception was, it was a two minute walk back to the hotel. After waiting two hours and the baby not getting any better, I rang again and was ignored three times. By this stage it had cooled down outside, so I took the baby for a little walk along the veranda to try and distract him. However, I had locked myself out when I went to go back in. The baby vomited again and did a massive shard at the same time that dripped out from the diaper. So at this stage, I was covered in vomit and diarrhea, locked out, with no phone, and with a screaming baby. I had to walk through the reception at the hotel, which happened to be attached to the restaurant, so those dining got a good eyeful and smell to go with their dinner. The lady at the front desk let me back in the room and I tried to ring again. The mother finally answered, and I said your baby is terribly sick. He's hot, vomiting, and seemed like he was starting to develop a rash, which is a dead giveaway for meningococcal. She sighed again. She said that they had just started dinner and would be straight back after that, and please don't try to call again. Another two hours later, around 9.30, I rang my mother and she came to help out and bring me a change of clothes. We finally got the baby down at about 11, and I rang one last time. I said that I had my mother with me and I would be leaving at midnight after I called an ambulance for their obviously seriously sick child. The mother ended up coming at 11.45pm, drunk as hell and very upset that I had ruined her night. She couldn't enjoy herself because she kept worrying that I was going to call. She cussed me out about the smell in the room and how many nappies and bottles I'd gone through. My mom stood back and let me handle it but spoke up and said if I could get paid now because we needed to get home. The mother handed me an envelope and shut the door in my face. Twenty dollars. That was all that was in the envelope. I was owed hundred and fifty dollars. My mom knew that we wouldn't get her to answer the door again, so she took me home. The next morning, mom woke me up with an extra hundred and thirty dollars. 
She had gone to the hotel at 7 a.m., and once she told the manager what had happened, the manager slipped a note under the hotel door saying that due to the extra cleaning and disinfecting that would need to be done in the room, there was to be an extra charge of $200 on the room, plus an extra $130 that our in-house sitter was owed. When everyone looks after each other in a small town, it's a nice feeling. Apparently, the father blew up when the extra charges were put on his card. He didn't realize the baby was so sick and was swearing at his hungover wife. The mother was screaming about the unsatisfactory babysitting I'd done and they left in a huff. I think about that poor baby every now and again, hoping that he was alright and got over whatever was making him sick. I was in a small panic for about a week waiting to get sick too, but thankfully and by some miracle, I didn't. OP, you are miles and miles more patient than I am. If that happened to me and that mom stood me up, I would have been like, listen lady, if you're not up here in the next 15 minutes, I'm calling an ambulance and I am out of here. <laughs> because I'm not about to let some baby die on my watch over 15 bucks an hour. That is way over my pay grade. And on top of that, what kind of parent leaves a sick baby with a teenager they've never met before? Our next Reddit post is from Yeet That Boy. Backstory, my dad has an older sister we'll call entitled aunt, and always, even as a child, my grandparents treated her like an angel and treated my dad like a piece of garbage. For example, when my dad was in college, he wore clothes that had huge holes in them, and the tradition in China is that you get a lot of new clothes on the new year. His mom told him that they were going to get him a brand new coat for the winter, and my dad was really excited. A few days before the New Year's though, his parents said that they can't get him a coat. The coat they were going to give my dad cost a thousand yuan, which is $143. But can you guess where the money went? Entitled aunt's freaking boyfriend! How can you treat your son like that? Here's something worse, the coat they gave the boyfriend was 2,000 yuan. You could have just split the dang money so they could both have new coats. The second my dad was out of college, he started working his butt off. He was able to give his parents money every year, even when they treated him like garbage. He later found out that each year, all of that money went to Entitled Aunt, but that's a different story. You get the gist. My dad treats his parents really well, and all that effort equals nothing or it goes straight to my Entitled Aunt. For some reason, my grandparents hated my dad, mom, me, and my siblings. This happened a few years ago when my mom was giving birth to my brother. I didn't realize how bad this story was until a few years ago because I just didn't understand. So I was born in Beijing. My mom was somehow able to foresee that house prices were going to go up there, so she and my dad worked hard to buy as many houses as they could. However, there's a limit to how many houses you can buy in Beijing. But my mom was able to find a loophole. She bought the house with her own money but put the house under someone else's name. She bought the house and put the house under my dad's mom's name. My mom paid for all the renovation. This is important later. Fast forward about four years. My mom is pregnant with my brother. There's a law in China that says you can't have more than one baby, so they came to the US to legally have a baby. This is when Entitled Aunt saw a chance. She took advantage of my parents' absence to manipulate my grandparents, telling them to put the house that my mom bought four years ago under Entitled Aunt's husband. Obviously, my grandparents caved in really easily and transferred the name. Luckily, my mom's brother was able to find out that they transferred the name. Now, we were still in the US, so we weren't able to deal with this immediately. My parents called their lawyers to have a court summons for Entitled Aunt. She took her time and waited for the last warning to finally come into court. She brought my grandparents along too. According to my uncle, she was smirking the entire time waiting for the trial to begin, thinking that we couldn't prove anything while low-key insulting our side of the family. I don't know how to translate this, but she said things like, My brother has always been naughty, probably passed it down to his children too. Or, My brother was such a coward that he didn't even want to come because he knew I'd win. Then came the sweet revenge. The court first asked Entitled Aunt to talk. She said that the house was bought by my grandmother and was then given to her husband. Obviously, she had no proof. Then, my uncle and his lawyers brought out receipts clearly stating that my mother purchased this house with her own money. I wish I could have seen Entitled Aunt's face, but my uncle described it as a dark green and maybe a little purple too. The judge then asked Entitled Aunt if this was true. The judge stated that if she lied, she would end up with a penalty much worse than just giving the house back. 
Surprisingly, she still stood her ground and claimed that the house was indeed her husband's, who got the house from my grandmother and paid for renovations. That's where she messed up. My uncle and the lawyers triumphantly took out another paper saying that my mother paid for all the renovations. Clearly not my aunt's husband. That's when she broke down like a B-word. She started crying, screaming incomprehensibly. She was taken to jail for one to two years. I forget how long, but holy cow, she deserved it. Hippity hoppity, according to the judge, this house is now once again my property. Our next Reddit post is from Sierra Malapop. I was simply an observer here. This happened a few years ago when I was in Poland. So I paid some money to have a guided tour of Auschwitz. At the beginning, the guide told the entitled family to leave their open food in their backpacks or put them in the trash. The entitled family listened with some obvious annoyance, saying something along the lines of, But we want to enjoy this trip. Why can't we eat it? After a bit, the son once again pulled out his food and started loudly munching while the guide was showing us and telling us the awful things that happened here. Once again, the guide told the entitled son to not eat during the tour, for obvious reasons to everyone except for that family. When we went into one of the rooms where the poor prisoners were kept, I saw the son pull out a sharpie and start writing what I'm guessing was his name over and over again on the walls. Once again, now obviously quite angry, the guide demands that he stops immediately or else there would be severe consequences. The entitled parents step in, shouting things about them paying to be there and being allowed to have fun. Who the F goes to Auschwitz for fun? And that the guide was being rude and disrespectful. The best thing, they were kicked out, or at least that's what it looked like, because after that they mysteriously weren't there for the rest of the tour. It was a very interesting tour and I would recommend it with a 10 out of 10 guide. <laughs> what I want to know is, who takes their kids to Auschwitz as some sort of like fun-filled family vacation? Our next Reddit post is from The Quarantinian. As a kid, I would often be working at my dad's workplace. He was an off-premise caterer and an event planner and would often be hired to put together lavish wedding parties. Huge feasts, cheese and fruit tables 40 feet long, lots of wine, sometimes multiple pigs for both an afternoon and an evening roast. Lots of fancy people wanting fancy parties, paying a ton of money, and expecting the world to revolve around them. One event in particular stood out because when the bride-to-be and her mother came in to go over details, they had some rather heated disagreements over some really, really stupid stuff. My dad would just sit there quietly, not taking sides, and patiently wait for people to work out their differences. But one argument came to an interesting and final conclusion. The mother of the bride was arguing about the specific shade the decorative ribbons and icing trim on the cake should be. Up until that point, she had proven herself incapable of letting her daughter have the final say in anything. From the menu to the plate garnishes to the time the meal was to start, the mother was insisting that she have her way on everything. The daughter was gritting her teeth and just grinding through it. But when her mother started to fuss about the exact shade of off light green, no that's too light, no that's too dark, the bride snapped. She loudly and firmly stated, Mother, if you don't knock it off right this instant, I'm going to disinvite you from the wedding. This is my day, and while I value your input, the decisions will be mine. She then turned to my dad, looked him squarely in the eyes and said, I will be signing your check. You work for me. Nothing is decided until I say so. If my mother tries to plan or change anything, you're to call me immediately. I do not expect you will have any problems with that. My dad simply said, not at all, and they got back to planning the wedding. Ah yes, the entitled mother planning her own dream wedding, because she probably henpecks her husband non-stop and is miserable in her own marriage. That was our slash entitled parents, and if you like this content, then check out my Patreon where I publish episodes that were banned from YouTube. Also hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit content every single day.